Hi guys, this is Karthik Arora. So this is the second video for the basic elements of DP and in this video I'll be discussing what is a dynamic programming state, what is a recurrence and finally top down versus bottom up. This one you guys may, may already be knowing but these two are some important things to come up with the DP solutions. So let's uh, discuss about DP states. So what is a state and how do we characterize a state? So we discussed in the previous problem that uh, in the previous video that a problem to apply dynamic programming to it we break down a problem into smaller sub problems okay now for every problem you will locate a few parameters that can characterize a problem uni uh, a sub problem uniquely okay so for example in the merge sort you were having an array okay then let's say that you are talking about a particular sub array that you want to sort so that sub problem can be mapped to two indices i and j which will tell you what sub array you are talking about so a sub problem can be mapped to two parameters two integers i and j and then one of the sub problems could be that i comma j so that would mean that you want to sort the region from or the sort the sub array from the ith element till the jth element so that is one way for characterizing a sub problem for the merge sort task and then your initial problem could be p1 comma n meaning that you want to merge sort the array from first element till the nth element so using two integers you are able to characterize all the sub problems or different types of problems right so this is somewhat the idea let me discuss it in general and i'll give you one more example so the general idea is that the problem p should be represented by using some parameters p1, p2 up to so until maybe some pk. So what we have to do is we have to find a way to represent our problem p using a set of parameters from p1, p2 so until pk. So we'll assume that you are going to use k parameters and these k parameters must uniquely identify what is p. So for example in the case of merge sort your problem p1 comma n would mean that sort the array from the index 1 to index n and it uniquely define, uh, defines a particular sub problem right that is the original problem and let's say p of 3 comma 5 would mean that you have to sort the array from the element 3 to element 5 and then we could say that okay p of 1 comma n in the case of merge sort p of 1 comma n breaks down to p of 1 comma n by 2 and p of n by 2 plus 1 comma n right so this means that we have found a way you to use a few parameters and represent our actual problem and the same parameters could be used similar kind of parameters with different values of course could be used to represent any sub problem as well this could further break down like this so 1 comma n by 4 maybe and n by 4 plus 1 comma n by 2 something like that okay so the idea is that you are able to use some parameters to represent a particular problem and that those parameters are able to completely define what the problem is and not just the problem different values for those parameters will define a different sub problem so let's uh, take Fibonacci again. So in the case of Fibonacci numbers, only one integer is required to uniquely define a sub problem. And let's say i. So p of i, problem i would mean that find the ith Fibonacci number. And this is a DP state, okay? This these parameters together all the parameters that are required to uniquely identify a, a sub problem is known as a dp state okay the parameters together that uniquely define a sub problem are known as dynamic programming state and these dp states are dependent upon each other and there is a relation that relates a particular dp state to some other dynamic programming states and that relation is known as recurrence so I'll give you more examples so that the concept is more clear to you. 
So let me take a easy example. Uh, let's say I want to find the shortest path in a directed acyclic graph from some node U to some node V. So I'm given a directed acyclic graph. Uh, a DAG is nothing but a graph in which there are no cycles and the edges are directed. And I would like to find the shortest path from some node U to some node V. Okay. Let's think what our DP states here could be and we'll come up with a good DP solution to explain the uh, idea here. So what I can say is that my original problem is to find my original problem is to find shortest path from node u to v. This is my problem. Now I want uh, I want to characterize this problem using a set of variables. And you can clearly see that I could simply use say p of u as the shortest path from node u to node v. Let me just define this thing. Another definition could be p of u comma v the shortest path from node u to v. So I could use two variables and define a sub problem. Then these variables can be changed to, to different values and the problem would uh, like in the definition you will be using these parameters and the definition will keep changing according to that. So here the definition is shortest path from u to v. Let me define it p of u comma v. Okay. Then p of 1 comma 2 would mean the shortest path from node 1 number 1 to node number 2. p of some 5 comma 8 would mean the shortest path from node 5 to 8 and something like that. Okay. So this is these two parameters uniquely define a sub problem. And my original problem is p of u comma v. That is what I want to find out. Now I will break down this problem into a relation. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to divide and conquer this problem. I know that finding the shortest path from u to v is hard for me. So what I'll do is I will see what are the, uh, the options from node u that I have. So from node u, I could go to any of the neighbors of u, right? From u, I could go to any neighbor. So if this is a neighbor, I could go here. If this is a neighbor, I could go here and something like that. So if there is a node from u, like if there is an outward edge from u to some node, I could go from u to that particular node. And once I go from node u to some node x that is a neighbor of u, that means x can go to u, from u you can go to x. <coughs> Sorry. Then from x you would like to find out the shortest path to v. Let's say this was node x. You will go from u to x and that would be 1 added to your total path. From x you would like to take the shortest path and go to v. And what is that? By definition, it is another dp state with parameters p of x comma v. And this is a dp state. Similarly, if I go to some other node, let's say this is node y, then I would like to take the shortest path from node y to v and that is nothing but p of y comma v. The shortest path from y to v. And you can clearly see that these two integers are totally capable of defining any sub problem. So, uh, and these sub, uh, these parameters together will define a unique DP state. That's it. This is the idea. And the relation among these different DP states is known as the recurrence. So for Fibonacci numbers, the recurrence is F of N. That means the Nth DP state depends upon the N minus 1th DP state and the N minus 2th DP state and this this is the relation between the nth, n minus 1th and the n minus 2th dp states. This is known as a recurrence. In the case of shortest path, you don't need to follow it. Uh, like I'm just giving you the relation. If you don't even follow, it's okay because this is a, this is a dp problem on its own. So if you're a beginner, it's okay even if you don't understand this, but I'm just giving you an example of a recurrence. So for the shortest path, one plus minimum. From u, you will go to some child of u. And from that child C, you would like to take the shortest path from C to V. Among all the child uh, of C, uh, among all the child nodes C of U, that means there is an edge from U to C. So among all these nodes that you can go visit from U, from that node child C, you would like to take the shortest path from C to V. And that will be a recurrence for the shortest paths. So guys, that's the idea for DP state and recurrence. A DP state is a collection of parameters that uniquely uh, a collection of parameters that can uniquely define a sub problem is known as dp state 
A relation between different DP states is known as a recurrence. That's the short definition. Finally, top down and bottom up. So top down. So the top down codes are quite nice. In top down code, you will simply say, okay, I want to solve the big problem and you will break it down into smaller sub problems and you will go from the top, the main problem that you wanted to solve, you will keep going down till you reach a problem that is so easy to solve that you can solve it directly. In bottom up, the idea is that first you are going to solve the e uh, easier problems and then use their solutions to go upwards. So you first of all solve the most easiest, the easiest problems of all, use their results to solve a little bit harder problem, then use their results to solve even harder problems till you solve the hardest problem that was your initial problem and you go from down till up. Okay. So top downs, usually beginners will find top down to be more intuitive. Whereas bottom up uh, requires a little bit practice. However, bottom up codes execute a little bit faster, even though both of them are asymptotically, uh, asymptotically both of them will have the same time complexities. Implementing top down codes is very easy. You will simply call a recursive function solve with all the parameters defining the original problem. Then that will break uh, that solve uh, that uh, from there we are going to use the recurrence and keep calling the recursive function with by changing uh, by using different parameters for defining sub problems using a recurrence uh, till we reach some base case that means till we reach a problem that can be directly solved. So top down simply write a recursive code that takes in all the parameters defining a sub problem and also keep memoizing the results that you get okay so you keep storing the results in an array so that you never solve a sub problem again a sub problem uh, will be defined by the parameters so you could have a dp table for e, uh, that uh, that is of the dimensions of the number of parameters required to store like required to describe your sub problem and that is the idea for top down for bottom up i'm going to discuss an, a more interesting approach in the next video so guys, if you liked the video, make sure that you like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.